Hi, it's Rob Bryanson, and uh, this is Infinity and the Boltzmann Brains, another episode of the Imagining the Tenth Dimension video blog. Uh, Boltzmann Brains uh, uh, floating in space is what we'll be talking about today, uh, and uh, that's why we're having a little bit of fun here with me being a head floating in space. Uh, just a reminder, if you uh, wanted to read along with this blog entry, uh, you can find it at tenthdimension.com slash blog. And actually, uh, one of the reasons I mention that each time is because uh, very often there are, are links within the blog that if you're reading along and you're not quite sure what I'm talking about or you'd, you'd like to know more, uh, you'd be able to click onto those links and uh, be able to, uh, to expand uh, what we're talking about even further beyond what's happening within this particular entry. So this entry goes like this. Last week, in an entry called Google, Memes, and Randomness, we talked about how something as complex as our universe and the multiverse of other universes really could spring from randomness. Now here's a link to a fascinating article in yesterday's New York Times. And again, if you were reading along in the blog, you could click on that article, but I, uh, I talk about it right now. This article includes a reference to the Boltzmann Brains Conundrum, an idea that ties very nicely to some of the ideas we explore regularly in this blog. Let me try to sum up Boltzmann's idea. By the time we're imagining a fabric that includes every possible expression of matter and energy, that must mean there are many expressions which are not complete universes, but rather just fragmentary bits of order, and those fragmentary bits could be observed by something approximating a mind within each fragmentary universe. The disturbing idea this leads to is that within the multiverse of all possible universes, there could be all these brains floating around, not physical brains of course, but this startling image helps to make the idea stick in our minds. This is all discussed in the above article, which also touches on some of the more metaphysical ramifications of all this. To be clear, the Boltzmann brain scenario is similar to the tale of Schrodinger's cat. It was originally offered as an extreme example of the absurd conclusions that might be drawn from applying quantum thinking to the macro world. The idea does have more power, though, when we accept the proof offered by a team of scientists at Oxford equating quantum probability states with our macro world's probability states. Is it really such a great leap to imagine that there could be organized systems representing an observer in many of those other universes within the infinite set of all possible universes? We keep returning to the concept of infinity with this project. Some people like to think of infinity as being only one thing, and therefore they jump to the conclusion that I'm talking nonsense when my way of visualizing the dimensions uses phrases, phrases like draw a line to yet another infinity. Here's a simple example of the same concept. The numbers following the sequence 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on extend out to infinity. But let's take any two of those numbers, 1 and 2 for instance, how many numbers are there between 1 and 2? Well, there's 1.1, there's 1.2, there's 1.75689425, there's an infinite set of numbers between 1 and 2. Finding different ways to get to infinity is what this is all about. And as Michelle from Norway recently reminded me in the 10th Dimension Forum, two parallel lines meet at infinity. Thinking of infinity as being the unobserved fabric of quantum indeterminacy shows a way to imagine how all these infinities connect together. And the parallel universes resulting from choice, chance, and circumstance for our universe, as infinite as those branches appear to be, is still just one more subset of all the possible expressions of matter and energy, memes and spimes that we're playing with here. Here's another way to describe the dimensions, which acknowledges that every single dimension extends out to its own version of infinity. Zero is a point of indeterminate size. In this way of imagining, zero and ten are very similar concepts. Both are of indeterminate size. The common practice of referring, referring to zero as infinitely small isn't really correct then. A point on a graph can be any size we care to imagine it, because it's not, its size is not relevant, just its location. And to be clear, zero is not a dimension, it's just where we start our description. One is a line created by a certain set of points extending to infinity. Start with a point, add a second point, join them together with a line. The line you have drawn is a line segment with those two points as its endpoints, but that line can be extended out in either direction to infinity. Two 
is a plane created by a certain set of 1D lines extending to infinity. Drawing a second line and then, sorry, try that again, draw a second line. As long as the second line is not directly on top of the first, those two lines are now part of an infinite plane that passes through those two lines. 3 is a space created by a certain set of 2D planes extending to infinity. Any two planes that are not directly on top of each other become part of an infinite 3D space that passes through those two planes. 4 is a line created by a certain set of 3D points extending to infinity. So 3 is our three-dimensional space. What would not directly on top of each other be for 3D space? It would be 3D space in a different state. Look at your watch. Let's call whatever time you see at this instant, or at the instant you looked, now, or the universe in one state, and we'll call that a point. 3 o'clock tomorrow afternoon is another state, and we'll call that our second point. Joining those two points creates a line segment, and the ends of that line can be extended back to the Big Bang and forward to the end of the universe. But as I've said many times here, the Big Bang is an illusion. It's better to think of it the way physicist Seth Lloyd describes it, the first binary yes-no that separates a particular universe out from the indeterminate background. So the fourth dimension can be thought of as a line that extends to infinity in either direction, and the Big Bang is just a point on that line. Same with the end of the universe. Five is a plane created by a certain set of 4D timelines extending to infinity. Five is our probability space, or space-time tree as some have described it in the 10th dimension forum. The bush-like branching structure of the David Deutsch team's recent proof is equivalent to this, which means this occurs at both the quantum and the macro level. So, take one timeline that extends forward or back from this moment, this now as we call it, then think of another alternate version that could also occur from that same now. And those two lines define an infinite plane that passes through any versions of our space-time that are logically consistent with our current now. Six is a space created by a certain set of 5D planes extending to infinity. Stay with me now. The space-time tree for our particular now doesn't include a version of the universe where it's 2008 and Kurt Cobain is still alive. That would be a different fifth dimensional plane. Imagining that other Kurt alive plane along with the Kurt dead plane that we find ourselves to be in then is the same conceptual leap as imagining one 2D plane and another 2D plane and extrapolating how 3D space is derived from that. Why do we say certain set of timeline branches then? Here's why. The version of the sixth dimension that our current timeline is, or must be, a part of is still constrained by the basic physical laws that are unique to our universe. No amount of, no amount of choice, chance, and circumstance at either the quantum or the macro level moves us to a universe where the laws are different, and that is what we mean by a certain set of timelines in this context. Could there be more than one version of the Big Bang that this infinite, observed, and unobserved sixth dimensional structure passes through on its way out to infinity? Certainly, but only to the extent that there are always random fluctuations, quantum outcomes, small decisions made that in the big picture do not affect things for our overall universe to the point that its existence is no longer possible. But the sixth dimension, like the other dimensions, is an infinity. That infinity encompasses all the possible beginnings and endings for our particular universe, and it includes all the possible paths that are not available to us from our current position in space-time, but which are still constrained by our basic physical laws. The ideas proposed by physicists like John Wheeler of reverse fine-tuning of our universe through quantum observation was discussed in my blog entry, Boredom and Consciousness. And this gives us a way to imagine how our current universe really could have multiple, slightly different versions of the Big Bang within its 6D space. 7 is a line created by a certain set of 6D points extending to infinity. Take the 6th dimensional structure we've just imagined, that is a point in the 7th dimension. Take the structure representing all possible outcomes for some other universe that has different basic physical laws, that is a different point in the seventh dimension. The line that passes through those two points extends to infinity in either direction. Eight is a plane 
created by a certain set of 7D lines extending to infinity. Now think of the seventh dimensional line that passes through the point representing our universe and the point representing another universe where the value for gravity is different. That line extends out to infinity in either direction, but it doesn't pass through universes where some other constant varies. To get to the infinite plane that passes through those two different lines takes us to the eighth dimension. Nine is a space created by a certain set of 8D planes extending to infinity. The ninth dimension is the way you get from one of those planes we've just imagined to another, and the space that passes through those planes may not, as I've said many times before, be able to actually express any physical realities itself. At that point we are dealing only with the information side of the information equals reality concept. But once again, there is a timeless, unobserved infinity that this ninth dimension stretches out to. Imagining the ninth dimension then as being filled with Boltzmann brains, each being an observer of some fragmentary organized bit of information slash reality is what the New York Times article we're talking about here is referring to. In my book and this project, I have preferred to imagine the ninth dimension as being the place where big picture memes are found, organized patterns that have the potential to generate one kind of reality over another in the dimensions below. 10 is 9D as a point of indeterminate size. Everything is potential only. 10 then is the infinite unobserved quantum fabric. Attempting to observe any aspect of this collapses us into some or, some or all of the dimensions below. Now, recalling again that this blog came from January, I ended the, the blog saying, our poll question ending soon is about Google and the way it has changed the way we interact with information. If information equals reality, then that is a very big question indeed for all of us as Boltzmann brains floating in our perceived, perceived reality. So to finish this uh, blog entry, I'd like to talk about... Uh, uh, the song that uh, that kind of relates to this idea, it's called uh, Big Bang to Entropy. The idea that there is a, an unfolded whole, an equilibrium state, as Sean Carroll has uh, been saying in, in his uh, reports, uh, for, inst uh, for instance, an article in Scientific American uh, about this idea, uh, before the Big Bang, after the end of entropy is an equilibrium state where everything unfolds back together. This song is about trying to get to that uh, sense of timelessness that uh, we're talking about with this project and uh, so let's finish off by watching that song from Imagine the Tenth Dimension this is Rob Bryanton enjoy the journey I slowed down till I heard the moon I heard the moon ringing ringing like a bell I slowed down Till I felt the earth I felt the blitz sliding Skaters on a pond And I finally felt the long room Moving underneath Birds and deaths of galaxies Pounding out the beat and I finally heard the whole song at once Big Bang to Entropy Big Bang to Symmetry Big Bang to Everything I slowed down Till I saw the sun Sun spinning on a pinwheel's arm. I saw the long chain of our DNA stretching back to the beginning for so long. And I saw the mighty ocean that surrounds and sustains, connecting us together in a song. I slowed down Till I saw the song There's only one of many One of many more 
And I finally felt the long groove Moving underneath Earth's and depths of galaxies Pounding out the beat And I finally heard the whole song at once Big bang to entropy Big bang to symmetry Big bang to everything It begins as nothing Silence at the end Every song's the same after or before But the parts in between There are so very many forms More than we could ever hope to know 